All right, so I recently tried out a pair of Skechers walking sneakers, and they're actually pretty good. Like, honestly, uh, comfort was really pretty decent, but they were a little bit heavier. I noticed they had two other pairs on the market that are more in line with the things that I like, which are soft, squishy, and uh, nice, crazy cushioning on the midsole. So I wanted to give the Max uh, cushion version. This is the Go Run Max Road 6, but I also want to compare it to the other pair, and this is a Go Run Ride 11. And uh, gonna be honest, this is a sketchier shoe, but um, the quality is is pretty pretty impressive uh, for the product that you're actually getting with what they're delivering here in either pair of these shoes. So I wanna kinda compare these two side by side, let you guys know which one I prefer on feet, let you guys know how these stack up to some of the competition out there because lots and lots of great competition out there in the Max Cushion or the Comfort Sneaker world nowadays. And I know that all of it stems from performance running and these are like some of those pairs that I think transition over to lifestyle uh, perfectly well so if you guys are interested in buying a pair of them I will link them in the description uh, I will give you guys some alternatives as well some other pairs that I like that are similar we'll start off with this first box here but first of all the branding uh, usually pretty on point with what uh, Skechers running sneakers at least not the regular stuff usually the running sneakers have tons and tons of branding so hyperburst ultra lightweight and resilient midsole foam for premium cushioning which is actually true it does have the arc fit which is the certified arc support and then it has Goodyear features the Goodyear rubber technology for enhanced traction and stability and durability and the hyper arc adapts to your stride to promote a smoother transition so hitting all the sweet spots uh, for what people are looking for that's kind of it there's nothing else on the lid but first of all as soon as you get these in hand it's like okay they're they're pretty light in hand squishy midsole and i really like this ice looking midsole as well it's actually called hyperburst ice and it's this really like interesting gradient fade i don't know if it's the actual material or if it's just like a spray painting over top of it to give this kind of uh lemon ice sort of infused look to the midsole but i actually kind of dig it it looks nice and it feels nice uh, on feet so first impressions out of the box way better than the walking sneakers from the perspective of just overall appearance it's definitely like a running sneaker but also the uh, the midsole's nice, and then the upper looks like a pretty nice upper as well. You have a mesh upper, just pretty much engineered mesh upper, and then you have some interesting fused on overlays here with a little zigzaggy pattern back here, kind of in the background of the S. Then you do have the Skechers S that's fused on the side of the shoe as well. A little bit of reinforcement for the laces, uh, fused material here, but very, very minimal. And then you do have uh, more fused for that top uh, lace, which is obviously important for runners because they cinch those down. And the midsole, it does say in this little uh, section here, carbon infused. I honestly don't really know what they're talking about there, but it looks like another layer of foam around the midsole, kind of uh, an extra little support layer. Uh, then you do have the Goodyear traction on the bottom, and the traction is actually really nice on these as well. So it kind of pains me to say it, and I know somebody's always going to leave a comment. Has stop being so insecure about the fact that you're reviewing a Skechers shoe, and the Skechers shoes are actually good quality because on the average, people are like Skechers are trash, right? Especially sneakerheads and sneaker people. But I'm looking at this from a different approach of like somebody that likes comfortable sneakers, likes innovation and technology, and that's part of the reason why I have a problem with Skechers in general is that Skechers is not usually at the forefront of innovation more of just stealing designs and stealing concepts from other brands that are trending and then releasing their own version of that. So that's just a justification for my feelings on Skechers uh, for those people that may or may not need it. But, you know, I don't like that side of things. However, from the running perspective, it's kind of like, you know, I know most people are going to be like, well, everybody kind of steals from each other. It's not too much. It's midsole, it's rubber, it's mesh upper in some form or another. And that's kind of what Skechers is doing here. Their midsole technology, though, is actually pretty legitimate. One of the first ones with the nitrogen infused like midsoles that uh, have hit the market. And now we have lots and lots of copycats of what Skechers um, released with this. And again, I don't know if they're the first ones to market with it. Uh, every a company probably has a dark secret, you know, hidden because of the innovation and, and the timeline of when they actually created that innovation. Like Adidas Boost, for example, was kind of a formulation from a company that was helping Puma out and then they went exclusive with Adidas and then Puma kind of had uh, their hands full and they, had, they actually sued Adidas because of it. But anyway, back to the shoes. So they do have this patented Skechers Arc Fit insole technology, which is a doctor certified arc support. And then the Hyperburst Ice actually features a dual density Hyperburst technology for a soft and stable uh, run, it says. And then it does say a carbon fiber infused plate to put more spring in your step. Now, I don't know where they're getting the carbon fiber plate because you can bend the shoe and usually when you have a plated runner, you can't bend it because the carbon fiber is there. So I don't know, again, maybe it's just something where they're on trend for doing that. But the dual density foam is interesting. I do want to check that out. So I do have a, a foam 
a density hydrometer here and I want to see the foam's about a 27 to 30 ish or so around there really really soft to be honest I'd say as a quick comparison to like the fuel cell joints here though this is much much softer on feet in my opinion uh, the fuel cell in general is probably the softest thing that I've ever put on my foot and these ones are absolutely incredible I did a review of these already uh, but uh, the fuel cell in the super comp trainer twos crazy crazy soft and let's see just for comparison reasons let's see what the the density is here like this is like a 23 25 27 somewhere in between there for softness anyways back to the shoes you have some mesh on the tongue you do have a really nice uh, like plush tongue as well as the heel of the shoe is a nice little liner there and, and then you do have a pull tab on the heel of the shoe which is honestly just a nice feature to have it's a very functional feature i think that a lot of shoes should do that in the front and the back personally it's something that i in, enjoy in a pair of sneakers so getting to this arc fit midsole thing this thing is crazy man so this is a really thick boy midsole it's really thick through the middle of the foot actually like the arc section is actually super thick which is interesting i kind of have a flatter foot so i actually notice uh it being too much arc in my foot when i'm wearing these things around that was the first impression that i got out of both of these shoes actually it's a little bit more exaggerated in the max uh, road version but the midfoot of the shoe was kind of almost too cushioned i'm used to the heel being a lot more cushioned but the midfoot of the shoe being more cushioned was really odd and i thought it was the midsole but it seems to me that it's probably the insole that's adding to the sort of discomfort i guess or just more or less odd feeling uh, that i have in the midfoot of the shoe uh, from the extra extra cushioning now transitioning over to the rides these things are absolutely crazy honestly for me in hand like side by side i don't know why but this one actually feels a little bit firmer uh, than this one does. However, on feet, you definitely feel a crazy amount of squish because uh, the midsole stack height is just huge on this thing. So if you're looking for max cushion sort of vibes and you want that, then this is going to be the better option for you out of the two. I'd say fundamentally, the rest of it's fairly similar. I mean, it's a little bit different in the design elements of the shoe, like the heel counter here is a little bit different, but you have mesh on the upper, then you have a couple fused layers over top. The tongue is a little bit more padded, I would say, on the uh, Max version, and then the heel counter is a little bit more padded as well on the Max version. The fit, I would say, is true to size on both of them. I'm a 9.5. 9.5 fit me just right on both of these. And then the pricing of them, the Go Run Ride 11s are actually $125. And then the max cushion versions are $145. So price-wise, these things are really competitive on the market. I mean, $125 for a pair of these. This would be a, the price point around the Pegasus 40s, the A6 Nova Blast 3, or the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V3 as well. That's about $130. This is $125. So this is probably an all-around better shoe than the Rebel V3s, but price-wise, it's close to the same. Rebel V3s are softer on feet, in my opinion, and lighter and more breathable. Uh, but this one has more stability, probably more durability and more traction uh, from just the overall impressions that I have between both of the sneakers. So it depends on what you want. If you want lighter, like I said, and you want more breathable and you want softer and squishier sort of feel on foot, Rebel V3s definitely uh, are better. But if you're looking for something that adds a little bit more durability, these are probably going to be a better option. Again, these are very similar to a Pegasus 40 on feet. I would say that these are probably a little bit more comfortable on feet than the Pegasus 40, even though the midsole stack is smaller than the $145 version. The smaller stack here is still really good. This is one of those shoes that you can wear and really be happy with your choice, even at a lower price point than what other companies would probably charge for this package. The other pair that this one actually reminds me of a lot is the New Balance uh, Fresh Foam X 1080 V12. Mouthful, but that shoe is really really nice, comfortable as well. A little bit more expensive on that pair, but really kind of has the same sort of feel in my opinion uh, as these do. But if you guys have a difference in opinion, please leave a comment in the comment section. So some of the pros about the Hyperburst Ice models that we have here. The Hyperburst Ice material looks nice. Feels nice as well, very comfortable on feet. I also like the fact that there's not a really large S on the side of the shoe. It's a little bit more subdued. I mean, it's a little bit smaller. And you look at this shoe and it doesn't scream Skechers like as much as some of the other models do. Also another pro, overall this is much more comfortable and better looking than most Skechers out there. I would say 98% of the Skechers out there, this is uh, one of the better looking ones. The bigger dog here is okay as well. A little bit thick boy on the midsole here. I actually prefer uh, the Ride 11s better. Another pro about the shoes are the versatility of these sneakers. The fact that you could wear these for pretty much any occasions. There's enough stability and traction and breathability and comfort in the shoes that you could wear these day in and day out and be happy. And the last pro worth noting is the traction of the shoes is actually really nice as well. The Goodyear branding, smart that they're teaming up with Goodyear. Branding is very nice on here. As for some of the cons, as I already mentioned, the footbed liner for me, a little bit big, sticks out quite a bit in the arc section of the shoe, but 
Maybe that's just me. It did feel a little bit uncomfortable at first, but I wore them all day. I took my parents to the casino, actually walked around all day at the casino uh, the other week, and it was actually fine by the end of the day, so just pointing that out. So back to my statement of why I like the Ride 11s over the Max Roads. Uh, honestly, it's just an appearance thing. I think that overall squishy comfort feeling on these is actually really good. Sometimes you could have Max Cushion like this and prefer it, but honestly, I do like having a mix of both, and I have enough Max Cushion sneakers out there. This is one that really has uh, an everyday sort of feel to it. This one just looks a little bit too big and is a little bit too much. Also the weight of the shoe. So these are 11.4 versus the 10.2 on the Ride 11s. I prefer a little bit lighter shoe, a little bit more sleeker shoe, and I think that overall comparative to these two, I actually like this one better. And just for reference, these are 9.5 ounces, so these are lighter than both of these offerings, but they're also more expensive at $180. But if you're looking for something a little bit more affordable, you don't mind the name of Skechers. Both of these options are gonna be pretty good for your feet. Honestly, it's surprising how good these things are comparison to other sneakers on the market. And just in general, the fact that we have such a crazy uh, running sneaker from Skechers. And these are the lower tier ones. They even have a higher like performance elite version. It's like $200 or so. I didn't want to go ahead and do that. I figured I'd be better off trying these two. So for the Ride 11s, the sizing, again, true to size, price 125. Stability, I gave it like a 7.9 rating out of 10. It's pretty stable on feet. Feels really nice. Breathability, I'd say probably like a 7.5. It's actually pretty breathable overall as well. Traction, I gave it like an 8.4. And comfort, I gave it a nine. Like it's actually that good. Like a nine rating is pretty crazy. Moving over to the bigger ones, again, true to size, 145 price. Stability, I give it a 7.4. Breathability, roughly the same, 7.5. Traction, again, the same, 8.4. Comfort rating, I did give it a little bit of a bump up to a 9.1. So it is more comfortable, softer and squishy on feet. A little bit less stable just because of the nature of the shoe, the fact that it is so much bigger, but it's not unstable by any means. It's actually quite stable, as most of the shoes are on the market when they create them properly, and it's not just for elite performance running when they're super, super narrow, and you can't use them and multitask them for other things, like what I like to do on this channel. So anyways, I was skeptical about them, but very impressive products. Honestly, something you guys uh, would probably enjoy. If you guys like my other recommendations, stuff like these, stuff like, you know, the, the Nike uh, Pegasus or the Infinities and stuff like that, the Invincible Runs, like these give the Invincible Runs a run for their money and they're $35 cheaper. It's crazy, man. Uh, but it's Nike versus Skechers. And again, some people are getting their feels on that. I try to keep an open enough mind to try other things. And sometimes it surprises me, even though there's, again, that little bit of Ah, I can't believe this is Skechers sort of vibe, but uh, but it is what it is, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. If you guys want to buy a pair of either of these, I'll link them in the description as well as some of the alternatives that I mentioned in the video. But hopefully you guys have a good rest of the day. Thank you guys for stopping by and watching, and if you guys like the video, drop a like in the video and subscribe to the channel, and hopefully see you back. All right, peace guys.